This is not a test Don't expect to be impressed Put on your life vest Sit down your armrest It's time to stray from the grind Don't take my hand cause you'll find No peace of mind everyone welcome to the next side quest the game between the game and sometimes we play a game and sometimes we don't play a game but this time we're playing a game ladies and gentlemen i'm mk gibson your your host and friend gibby who do i have with me why i'm between two bevins and it freaks me out every time this happens so let's go with bevin number one rick Walteri. god you can just go fuck yourself mm-hmm. with all the foresighters in the just, world just 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 a big jackhammer in the uh-huh. in the pooper yep okay <laughs> introduce yourself you already introduced me. Everybody's like, this is a side no, quest. No, give me your spiel. Give me your spiel. Let me like, like we, don't, we don't need give your me spiel. I'm Rick Walteri. I write books. If you see a book by somebody named Rick Walteri, buy it. Why wouldn't you buy it? I'm a funny guy. <laughs> <laughs> All right, Bevan, can you top that one? Uh, no. Hello, All friends. Right, try anyway. can, can, you, can you bottom it, though? Oh, good. Hello, friends. Robert Bevan here, author of the Caverns and Creatures series of comedy fantasy novels and short stories. Also author of a lot of the shingles books um i'm not playing the role of klaus richter that's that's my go-to um <laughs> you, you haven't played klaus richter in quite some time. shit or or george <laughs> the sorcerer god damn it i have however had a few beers before this airing <laughs> this recording but we are actually here to play a game of sorts amongst ourselves for those who are on the podcast well you can't see anything so that sucks but you're very you video friends uh you clearly see what i have is a 12 bracket worst dungeons and dragons tropes character these are now these are character tropes these are the things that people like they these are the archetypes that a lot of people bring to the game we love dungeons and dragons you love dungeons and dragons and if you don't why are you listen to this podcast but we've all played with these people. Sometimes we've been these people. You you create a character and they fall into a certain archetype. Uh, the number one seed is the horny bard. Number two, the self-righteous paladin. Number three, the murder hobo. Number four, me, ultra kill barbarian. Ugh, ugh. Number five, Mr. Badass. That's the one who just thinks they are the best and they're also the min- Mr. They're also the min maxer. Number six, the earth mother druid because she too has seen critical role. Number seven, the snotty royal person, usually an elf, usually nobility, and they they tend to lock, talk in a British accent the entire time. Steve does not count on this one. Number eight, I cast fireball. We all know that mage sorcerer and everybody else who does that. Number nine, the lone wolf. I don't play with the party. I play by my own rules. And number 10, Orphan McEdgelord. He, you know who I'm talking about. They just made Batman. Number 11, I just made Dritz Duordrin. The copycat player, the one who writes, who sees a book, sees a character, and says, "I'm, I just, I'm just going to make this." And number twelve, it's the, it's my story, DM, where you're basically just playing the book they haven't written yet, and your d- decisions mean nothing. These are the top twelve, gentlemen. Uh, number ones, four, three, and two, uh, get a, uh, a, a buy in the first round. So we start with the lone wolf versus I cast fireball. Discuss who wins and who loses. So are we deciding which which is the worst or which is better or which is the, the least worst? That's well, I, mean, I, I don't think we want to get down to the least annoying. I think we want to get to the most annoying. This is the worst person. OK, then 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 the lone wolf, wolf is far more annoying than I cast fireball, because here's the thing. I've played with a whole bunch of I cast fire fireball people. And you know something? It never ceases to be amusing to me. And this is this is in cases where I'm sometimes the, the target. Mm-hmm. It's like, yes, you know. But I've, I firmly admit that I also don't like, you know, get emotionally attached to my characters where some char- some players do, and I can understand how they would find that annoying, but, um, yeah. No. And having played the lone wolf also, I also know that, that that's annoying when I do that. <laughs> now, let me, let me get I cast Fireball straight. Is this specific to Fireball and the uh, collateral destruction, or is it just, is it supposed to be like a... Uh, I do the same shit every time. It's I do the same. It's the fuck the party. And I do the same shit every time. It is that the one note is the one trick pony person. Okay. Um, I'm, I think I'm going to go with that because it's more boring. 
a lone wolf can be fun. Well, okay. That's, but let, let, let me tease this out of you a little bit. So when you were playing Klaus, how often did Klaus go off on his own and do his own thing? Um, almost Klaus. always, yeah. <laughs> Rick, was that annoying or not? <laughs> well, you know something? Some pe- for some people, As a person who played with him. For some people, who would be, it would be annoying. But, uh, but Bob's, Bob's always managed to make it moist. <laughs> <laughs> there you go. <laughs> Ew. Uh, between these two, like the lone wolf player, the one that like uh, when you're actually sitting down to play the game, you know, not not these comedy wackety schmackety things that we do, but when you're playing a legitimate game of Dungeons and Dragons, the lone wolf person's like, I need to go off on my own and do my own thing. Whenever it splits the DM's attention, because sometimes the party gets split, it happens. But when the person specifically stops the flow so they can have their own fun, the DM has to go into another room. Uh, with that person for 30, 40, 50 minutes, an hour plus, and it really, really breaks everything because someone has to be that edgy person. And I find that personally the most frustrating and like damaging to this because you're sitting down to play a game. It's a it's this this collaborative storytelling experience. Uh, the I cast fireball person. Sure, you get a, if you find a one trick that works, I get it. Uh, blowing everything up is fun. We we were all kids, you know. Uh, my my gut says the lone wolf is the more of the annoying of the two, so I I would eliminate. Well, depends, I mean, it depends on how you how you do it. Because like in, in the last game we recorded that has not aired yet, uh, mm-hmm. Jorsa the sorcerer went off on his own because I had a, a fun idea, but he you know did that as quickly as possible and then jumped in a portal to join everything. Like, with with except with respect to what you just said, yeah. I'm sorry. Go ahead, finish your thought. I was, I was thinking, Lone Wolf played responsibly. Hmm. Well, and that's the thing is, I, I think every character type could be played responsibly. I think the reason they're yeah. on this list is because they're irresponsible. But we also, you get the yeah. veto on that because we just said every time you go up to do something, it's pretty much comedy gold. That's true. Shingles, I don't mind the uh, the like, collateral <laughs> damage aspect of I can't buy her fault fireball but if we're considering i cast fireball just going to the well continually with the same thing even if it doesn't mean collateral damage um i ran i ran some players through a tomb of annihilation recently um not too recently but uh and it's all full of dinosaurs and prehistoric animals and one of the characters had i think it was was the befriend animals Mm-hmm. And it just automatically works if we're, if we're if any creature with a below a four intelligence. And it was just constantly spamming it against these like fucking like angry tyrannosaurs. And it was just like, Jesus fucking Christ. Um, yeah. After a while, I had to start sending essentially slee stacks after them because I was just getting tired <laughs> of, this, of this goddamn uh, you know, thing. So I so- had created a character a while back that his, he was a, he was an investigator. He was a cop. And uh, uh, I, but he had that, he had the observant trait. He started with it. So, he had a passive, like uh, a passive perception and investigation of both above 20. So the DM was like, I'm like, he set traps and I'm like, are they, how well these things hit? He's like, fine. There's traps here, here, and here. I'm like, okay, cool. You know, and I, it, it, it was annoying, but it's because it's a power that's always turned on, you know, but yeah. that's the character that I built. I realized that it was kind of frustrating for that DM, but I but find I guess, the lone wolf. It, yeah. Go ahead. No, no, I was in, I was going to say, but I also find the I cast fireball things that kind of falls on the DM to think of ways around it. <laughs> well, I'll say this: we make we make fun memes. I, I said, cast the goddamn fireball. You see those memes run through Facebook and all these other and all those type of things because it's funny. We all know that thing. Lone I didn't Wolf ask usually... how big the orphanage is. <laughs> I said, cast <laughs> exactly. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Uh, I but we don't make memes about the lone wolf and that one I find to be the more annoying of the two. So, uh, so it's my vote to 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 I cast fireball is not the most annoying and he gets stricken out. Um, I can go with that because yes, uh, the exception I made was played responsibly and like you made a good point. These are you know it's it's only a problem if it's not used responsibly and that's what we're talking about here, yeah. right? Rick, yeah. your vote doesn't really matter, but do you have one? Oh. <laughs> I'm just voting third party. <laughs> no, nah. my, my, I'm also saying Lone Wolf is is more annoying in terms of uh, in terms of uh, really just kind of breaking the game, being selfish and shit. All right. Well, so he is stricken out, and Lone Wolf moves on to the next round. I'll, okay. I'll add, I'll add one more. Uh, as far as doing the same shit over and over again. It's like, like that is also 
I don't mind that as long as the uh, the character is fun. Otherwise, you know, like yeah. they're, if they're doing you know fun role play stuff, making jokes. If you're a warlock, just Eldritch blasting every time you get into a fight, that's good for you. Yeah, yeah. Unfortunately, that's with, with, with us warlocks. I've I have played a couple of warlocks. Like that's your only really good spell that you have. Everything is built around Eldritch blast. Um, it's your old reliable. It's your ray of yeah. frost. It's your firebolt. No, you know, Bob has a good point. It's like you know. If you're using the same attack all the time, but you have a fun character, yeah, who, care? who cares? I created <laughs> I created my one warlock. I specifically built into the push and pull mechanics of it, of like the, the thing, so I could like push a target after I hit him with Eldritch Blast or pull him, so I could like knock them over edges or pull them t- t- closer to the group. And I, I tried to use it to, cr- to create the hit somebody, but also control the battle space. So like, have fun with that type of thing. All right. So next on the seed, Mister Badass versus It's My Story. Dungeon Master. Mr. Badass, I remind you, is the one who is Mr. Min Max. They take all the best gear. They want all the pluses. They want the highest armor class. They they think they are the metaphorical tits. And of course, as soon as they get hit first, why is everybody attacking me? <laughs> and uh then the D and the it's my story DM, the one that man, when you're playing this game, that DM is just so into their own world the moment you take a make a joke about it the moment you like you try to move left when he wants you to go right he has a he or she they have a shit fit so that kind of dungeon master so i open to the floor oh so so i went to i went to a shore con years and years ago and uh the dm running it was an it's my story dm he was so enthralled with his world uh, there was one point where we're walk, riding through a town and he just ins- and we, we weren't stopping we were riding through the town and he insists on giving the explanation for every t- for every shop we're passing like a long yeah. explanation and finally I, I lost my mind i was like you know what my character closes his eyes so he doesn't see any of it yeah yep and yeah he didn't particularly particularly ap- appreciate that yeah that's no fun i mean the the mr ba- the mr badass thing yes i played with that it's annoying it is te- i've been that i was like early in my career that's yeah. i've been that guy yeah I, I, th- I think early in, in D and D careers, I think everybody's been that guy. Yeah. But, yeah. Uh, but I think that it's my story. DM just wrecks it for everybody. <laughs> I, I agree. Bob, what do you think? Um, I don't know. I, I'm, I'm going to be the odd man out here. The min maxer is, uh, I mean, I'm making assumptions Power about gamer. this guy. Just, uh, generally an annoying person. And, uh, Look, they're they're not in it. For, well, I, I want to say you know, people have different ways of having fun. People enjoy this game in different ways, and that's fine. Um, that is probably not a, a table I'm going to have as much fun at. Um, because yeah, I I don't min max at all. I, I I take skills and feats and whatever according to what I think I'm going to have the most fun with what I can make dirty jokes with. Yeah. And, um, yeah. And, and I could see them getting annoyed with me for playing sub optimally for this, for this particular group that we all play with. Uh, I think we do a lot of things for, for the, for the yuck yucks and the jokes and the, uh, the flavor of it. But it, again, for these particular guys, these guys and gals who play Dungeons and Dragons, um, these are the worst versions thereof. I I, right. I, know, I noticed, Gibby, there's nothing on here for like the person who doesn't stop joking around. So we're kind of sucking <laughs> our own dicks a bit. <laughs> well, okay. To be fair, I went, I just, I literally like when we, when we planned on having this today, like I Googled it and it was, it was, I said, okay, what are the top worst things? And I, I grabbed their top 10 list and added the two extras at the end. Uh, I found another, I found like a Reddit post and was like the, uh, the copycat player and the self-righteous dungeon master. So I just added that. I just, I literally just stole it from the internet and put it for our own kind of like, like any good writer I borrowed, I stole and I'm, imp- we're improving on it. So there we go. That's what we're doing. So suck at our own dicks. As far as the DM goes, like, all right, I'm. I'm in it, you know, whether it's for this podcast or for, you know, games I play elsewhere. I'm in it to relax, drink some beer. Wait, you, and you've been cheating on us? You, you've been seeing other, other tables? No, unfortunately. Okay. But um, but, you, but you're open to it. <laughs> yeah, and I have played D&D before this podcast. What I'm saying is in my adult many games? D&D life. What's your body count? <laughs> your mom. And oh. I, I, um... Dad. Yeah, it's it's. Oh, you can do that. I don't, that'd be awesome, dude. 
<laughs> uh, yeah, that would involve some time travel. Stay out of my mom's ashes. Um, what was I saying? I just yeah, no fucking idea. You've been, you've been fucking, fun, under, you've been relaxing, fucking under tables, drink, <laughs> drinking beer, and uh, yeah. So if the, if the DM wants to, you know, go on for an hour and a half about you know, the the general store. I'll still be drinking beer. This brick was first I'm, laid by Mithril the Mighty <laughs> in the in the in the time of the eleven twelve new New Period Standard Time. And Mithril the Mighty, I can that that thing just shut up. Just write the book already. Yeah, just I'll, write I'll, the I'll, book. I'll admit this is that's the it's my story. Dim is one of the reasons I love Roll Twenty because it's like playing remotely. Yeah, I can put, pick up my phone, tune that person out, and then yeah, when I they come back, you. <laughs> so so so, and then when they call my character, I could just be like. Yeah, that's what I do. Or something. <laughs> Just some generic Eldridge, answer. So what do you do? Eldritch Blast. <laughs> I have Fireball. That's what I do. I blow up your general store because I can. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Wait, wait, before you give that explanation, let me have my booth. <laughs> <laughs> so my vote I might say is that Mr. Badass gets eliminated and the Mr. it's my story DM advances on. That's my vote. Um, yeah, I'm, I'm going to go. I'm going to eliminate the, the DM. I, I don't care. I'm going to. I'm gonna do what I'm gonna do anyway. You think Mister Mister the Min Max badass is the more annoying of the two, Rick? It annoys me more. Yes. Yeah. Okay. The 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 DM one annoys me more. Yeah. The Mister okay. ba- the Mister badass. Uh, as long as the DM is not is not feeding into that and let, letting that person like you know just run wild, which I've seen happen, um, it's usually dealable. <laughs> okay. Well, uh, th- good thing a democracy works. Okay, moving on. The uh, the eleventh and the sixth seed. You have the I, I just made Dritz to Origin copycat. So the copycat player character and the Earth Mother Druid. Uh, these character tropes they're they're kind of weaker to me because it's like I now I have played with a lot of people who want to play the Earth Mother Druid and it's always, and it, it's inevitably every oh, hang on how boring. do I say this up being I sound like an asshole yeah it's boring it's usually a first timer a lot of times the first timer is like I want to play a druid no you don't. You you say, no you don't. It is the hardest. It's the hardest class to play. It is the most versatile. You don't know when to be a spellcaster. You don't want to control the battlefield. You don't know when to be a, a, a meat shield as a bear. It is the hardest to do. I want to be a druid, okay? And they all think they're poison ivy or some shit. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, this doesn't bother me at all. And you mentioned Critical Role. I've never watched that or listened to it or however you consume okay. it. Okay. Um. I, so I don't know the reference, but uh, yeah, a person that wants to play. I mean, what I. Imagine there's a, there, the, the, the one in the there was the one female player in that and she had an, her character had antlers and like that and then the, the dungeons and dragons we had, had another druid with antlers it's another redhead with antlers and there there is this there is a antler ginger trope within the uh the the druid community uh the druids are powerful they are extremely powerful powerful characters uh was without critical a role pre like 2012 uh, I think you guys beat them by a bit, actually. All right, because my you druid guys. had antlers in that first book, and uh, <laughs> that was not a reference to Critical Role. Yeah, they, they. I, I'm pretty sure you guys uh, beat them. To maybe that, maybe they were referencing my books. No. Oh. <laughs> mm-hmm. yeah. uh, the the copycat player, it or it, it's it. I don't find it as annoying, only because we've all done it. It's now someone who's trying to live their power fantasy through. I'm, I'm going to make a copy of Dritz or I'm going to make a copy of uh, uh, Logan Nine Fingers from the Blade itself or something to that effect. Uh, that annoys the shit out of me. I like, like I was I was trying to I mean, make an original character and uh, sure. And I was playing this one game and um, and I got a owl familiar and. I had, they asked me what his name was, and some you know, girl next to me said, "Oh, you should name it Hedwig." Fuck that! I'm not naming it Hedwig. <laughs> my cop character, my, the one I told you before, his name is Inspector Riggs, and his and his bird familiar was Murtaugh. That's oh, how God. I went with that. So I probably sh- I probably shouldn't say this, T- Tony. Tony, if you're listening, I do enjoy p- playing with you. Uh, no offense. Oh, Tony's but, gonna throw you under the bus. But, oh, oh, but 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 Tony's paladin character has a horse, and he named it fucking Shadowfax. Oh, and it's like Tony. Re- really the fuck? Like every time it, it was, I would, I'm just like, we we couldn't have come up with something else. <laughs> oh, I mean, you could have gone with like you know like Datafax or you know Equifax. Uh, <laughs> Equifax Equifax exactly. would be fucking hilarious. <laughs> you know, but no, Tony. Ah, oh, say it isn't so. <laughs> Uh, the reason I, the reason that the, I just made a, the, the copycat player doesn't irk me as much. Cause usually when you're younger in your D and D career, when you're like in your teens and your early twenties, people, 
adults who are still doing it, yes, that is when it gets really annoying. That is when it gets really. All right, really so annoying. it's it's a double edged sword. You know, you're either playing with annoying adults or teenagers that are inherently annoying. All right, all right you, well, way to use my own words against me. See, you're like mm. you're like a beer savant. You know, I then I based on that. Uh, ooh, that is a rough one. Okay, See, here here's my thing. I I kind of find both of them boring. The Earth Mother Druid is just dull and, and uninteresting. But the problem is the copycat thing in the hands of a good role player can be fun. The problem is if you're a good role player, chances are you're not just making a carbon copy of, some, of something. Right. So and as Bob pointed out my own words and I'm who might argue with myself. It, these are the worst versions thereof. So if it's the worst version of the earth mother druid, you know, the, the hippie with the, at least you can make fun of her like and Julie. have fun yeah. with that or him, you know, like I've, I've seen them yeah. both. Uh, uh, yeah, I think the, the, the copycat person gets to be more annoying because they're, they're living a fantasy that you, they're there to play out their character. They're not here to actually enjoy the yeah. game. So, yeah, I mean, like, you know, look, look, I mentioned that, like, uh, in another recording. Yeah. Arrow of the Gods was basically just kind of like a take on Batman, but it was like, okay, what, what about an incompetent, far more insane bat- Batman? Right. Like, you know, if you if you're going to take a if you're going to start with an archetype and then run with it into somewhere else, that's fine. But if literally yeah, if literally if literally you were like, you know, you were playing Kung Fu Panda and you were just reciting lines from the movie and doing nothing else, you know, as you're trying to like, you know, fit it into a monk class. Yeah, if you're, this is, yeah. you're this is what you're, I'm you're picturing. Old, yes. Yeah, you're getting old. If Skadoosh is your catchphrase, then you are a loser. Yeah. So, yeah, okay, I think we all agree that Earth Mother, uh, while annoying, not as annoying as the yeah. as the moder- as the this person playing. All right, so copycat, you get to move on to the next round. Uh, for the for, for the preliminary round, the last two, the snotty royal versus orphan Mitch, orphan Mick Edgelord. <laughs> Although it is uh, fun when both of these guys are in the same game. All right, explain <laughs> explain the snotty royal to me again. Okay, so someone who is like immediately like it's uh, now I have played in a variety of Dungeons and Dragons games, other tabletop role playing games, and I was a LARPer for several years as well. Yes, the dirty secret is out. Nerd. And yeah, oh my God, I know, let me <laughs> tell you. But not but, bastions of coolness like us. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Uh, but inevitably, there's going to be that one person who shows up who can put on a posh British accent who, uh, Oh yeah, it's wrong. Uh, and they're just they get real snotty. They I, I am and it takes them eight minutes to give their whole goddamn title and everybody's got to bow and scrape and everything like that because if for the first time in their life this nerd has power. And that one drives me up the motherfucking <laughs> wall. Or because it's like cause it's 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 not just a royal, but it's like someone with a title, someone you have to kiss their ass and because they insist upon it. And I uh I'm a very working class blue, blood. like uh, uh, I, I was enlisted military, so I don't cotton well to these uh, 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 highfalutin types, and it drives me crazy. I don't think you've ever played with us. With a, a, I, th- I thought at first you were going with like just somebody who just plays with an accent. And yeah, I played, so an entire, I, I played an entire fucking campaign with a Cajun accent once. So I no, no, that's, no, no, that's no, one no, thing, no, but no. literally, someone is like they pick like. Yeah. You know, I played a character once had the royal background, but they ran away from the royal life, you know, the prince and pauper style. You know, it's like you can have a, the royal background, but no, when you really lean into the royal, like, no, my father would get me out of this trouble. Oh, no, kill that peasant because I said, okay, my word is law. And like, ever, eh, there is a, in the game world, I'm, you, I'm your lord and you have to obey me and you have to like show reverence to me. It's, it's like the ugly kid who's rolling a character with 18 charisma for the first time in their life. They're pretty. Now, these people are like, oh, I find they're next level annoying to me. Yeah, so going back to the accents, I am. Um, yeah, this might probably isn't relevant, but I played. I uh, I was a uh, a new player in a well, not not a new player, but a uh, uh, new to this group. This is a group of strangers I never met before. I was in Korea. I went over there just because I, I had a hankering to play D and D, and so I, I blindly joined this group. And man, everybody was speaking British accents to each other. <laughs> and they were like always in character. They were just like having side At least some of these were Korean people too. No. No, these oh, weren't. Damn. Damn. Um they were having like side discussions about their religions and stuff. Like all completely I was so fucking uncomfortable. I um I I, I literally 
I went out for a pack of smokes and never came back. Yeah. That that's where you feel you're like you're in the middle. You've stumbled into a fetish, not a game. Yeah, but I mean, it's like what I was saying before. That that was fun for them. Great. That, but wow, not for me. Yeah, like I, I've never had an issue with the snotty royal because you know it's it's one of those things where if you're playing a barbarian and like somebody's trying to play royalty, you're just gonna kill their ass. <laughs> or or I mean, if they're in a D and D party, you know. Your royalty is not going to be respected. Yeah. You know, consequences later down the line. Which be brings us to the other person on this list that we have not discussed yet. Orphan McEdgelord. This person's this person is Bambi. This person is every D- Disney character pre, uh, from 1998 and backwards. Their parents are dead. They're going to tell you about it. They are the brooding Batman character. They're very close to being Mr. Badass. But no, they they are. They're people who like gambit. They they want to wear trench coats and have a ponytail, and they want to stand on on a on a cliff somewhere and brood and talk about their tragic back backstory. And they never fail to not bring up their tragic backstory. All right, I'm picturing the kid from the South Park movie. Do you remember <laughs> what I'm talking about? Mysterion. <laughs> I don't remember. I haven't seen that in decades. But uh, oh, the, oh, the South Park movie. Yeah, the movie. Uh, where he was like, he talked about a. a and he was almost aborted or something. Oh, Jesus Christ. Anyway, like, um, yes. So that made me laugh a lot. So I, I don't know. I like this character. <laughs> yeah. Again, I, I don't think I've ever, like, you know, this, this, this feels like, you know, a character if I ran into, I would like just be, I wouldn't even notice. I'd probably just tune him out. Like, uh, like, honestly, the, these two are a wash for me and okay. I kind of consider them annoying, but it's kind of like a harmless annoying. <laughs> okay. All right. Well, then, uh, if it's no one's, no one cares. Then I'm. My vote is to like Orphan McEdge Lord. D and D's full of edge lords. We know it, and they're annoying. Whatever. The snotty person. They take the cake. The ones who demand that you demand their their your respect and feelings, even though whether or not they deserve it. What are okay. your thoughts? You cool? I'm cool. Yeah. Okay. Well, we have the first round. Okay, I think we've so established that nerd moving into the semifinals <laughs> or whatever the hell it is we got the preliminaries we're into the, i guess the first round that's not semifinals yes yeah, that's semifinals the quarterlies there we go quarterlies okay the lone wolf versus the horny bard horny bard is a classic staple of dungeons and dragons it has been around forever but jesus christ like like has someone ever played just the asexual bard like nope i i'm here to my music is my craft and I, my penis stays in my pants i don't know uh, I've, I've i've played with bards that like I played with somebody who was a power gamer bard. So their whole thing was like, you know, was like, you know, let, let's see how I can crank up the party and stuff. That's pretty much what their, ex- their ex- existence was. So, I mean, okay. yeah, I have played with non horny bards. Well, yeah, Amazing. but we're talking about the horny bard. But, right. Like the horny bard trope, that person who's like, annoying stops and- everything to tell a joke about their dick. Now, granted, I know we're walking very dangerously close to our entire bread and butter here. So uh, <laughs> no, I'm just talking about, like, no, that's not what I'm talking about. I'm talking about like, you can tell as many jokes about your dick as you want. I'm talking about like any time there's a, a opposite sex person there is. I'm or going to try to seduce like, them. I, I seduce yeah, the Tyrannosaurus. Yeah, yes. yeah, yeah. Right. That's oh god. All right. Yeah. I, I just put this in the same roll the die as they do it or they don't. Let's move on. <laughs> I, yeah, I just put this on the same thing as as Snooty Royal. I find it mildly annoying, but it's nothing that bothers me. I, I would consider the lone wolf to be far more irritating. In that context, sure. Like, there's always the person who wants to be the mis- I want, I'm a, Mr. Or Ms. I fuck everything. Sure. You got your jokes in. You fuck everything. And after a certain point, I, I just feel sad for it. Even when it's played to the nth degree, the lone wolf played to the nth degree is still more annoying because it takes the game away from the rest of the players. Yeah. No, I, I, there's, a, there's a special place of hatred in my heart for... Um, tired jokes that won't die and the, okay. you know, that aren't funny to begin with i'm going with the horny, horny bard that's the one you think is the more annoying yep okay uh rick you're the decider well i, I, I already said i okay. consider the lone wolf to be far more you know, okay. like I, the horny bard it, it it becomes just white noise to me lone wolf moves on all right uh, the It's My Story DM versus Mr. Ultra Kill Dumbass Barbarian. The smash, smash, crashy, crashy. You know, it's it's when done right, it can be fun and funny and a fun character. But it is also it is a crutch for a lot of people. And 
especially when you if you start to get into the game because we're playing this to the to the nth degree this is the person like you're actually trying to like negotiate you're trying to negotiate a terms or something like that he comes in and just smashes something you know uh you're, you're pretty much describing all my characters i would just say yeah it's moog you know like just like like i crush his skull you know uh. <laughs> i i really have never had a problem with the ult with the ultra kill barbarian probably because i've played more than my share more than my share of uh of uh <laughs> You know, the, I'll, I won't even say ultra kill. More like spoiler characters who just who who have some who have triggers that set them off, and those triggers are everywhere. Um, I, I I don't know. I've I've never I've never had a had a had a problem. Do you feel with like that. you have to recuse yourself from this one, Mister Mister Walteri, because well, of no, not, not even that? I I I think it just forces other players to be a little more clever. Not uh, just Moog, <laughs> Silas. <laughs> yeah, you don't have to. Well, I, smash things physically to fuck up a situation <laughs> yeah ex ex exactly there is a there is a certain thing where that player is part of the party and you have to like you have to 1980s a team this you have to know when to knock ba out and get him from point a to point b because you know you got to fly there so you have to like oh look distraction you do that with, like you do that with paladins you do that with certain like barbarians uh it is part it is part of what we do yeah. um I still, I do think the it's my story. DM is the more annoying of the two. I uh, 100% agree. Yeah, 100. percent the, the 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 no the the ultra kill barbarian. Like I said, doesn't bug me. But uh, if I'm stuck in a, in a it's my story DM, I'm like I'm I'm sitting there looking at sharp objects, like you know, wishing to use them. <laughs> All right, moving on to the next next battle. It is the uh, the copycat character. Versus the straight up classic murder hobo, Mister or Ms. Murder Hobo. Z they murder hobo are the ones that just <sighs> everything. I had okay, so D and D story that's true, and I, and I call it out my friend by name. Uh, literally, it was like we talked about what are we gonna do uh, like once we got on our first adventure. What, what should we do? Maybe we should maybe we want to open a store one day. Maybe we want that way we can like get in good with the guilds and all that stuff. So the characters, there was a local like tavern, like, excuse me, a, a wheeled merchant going by. They went and murdered the merchant just to steal those. those they're like, boom, we have a store now. And then we had the audacity to ride the, 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 the wagon into the town where he comes from. And everybody's like, where's my old Ollie? Like, this is old Ollie's car. You're not old Ollie. <laughs> and then we're like, and then we're immediately running. And so it was one murder after the next. We, uh, there was a point we couldn't go into towns anymore because of our murder hobo friend. Dude, I, like, this, at all. This is like every video game I've ever fucking played. <laughs> yeah, also, that, I mean, okay. that's. It's. Uh, I mean, there's an important part for the DM to have actual consequences like that. And, yeah. uh, no, our DM was very good about it. But my point is, it's like again, the murder homo, murder hobo, uh, starts to lean to the lone wolf because maybe you don't want to be. Now you're guilty by association, but because you, the pl person, want to keep playing the game, uh, maybe you have to get, retire that character and pick out. Like, I guess I have to make. I ha my fun has now changed because now I have to become another murder hobo to get along with this one because this one is not changing. It does not see the error of their ways. It does not see that their impacts, both as a player and both as a character, have impacts in, in and out of the table. The murder, hobo, the murder hobo is funny to them and any other murder hobos, but to someone else who's not one, they can't play the game anymore. You have hijacked my fun. It's, it's going to depend on your table. Yeah. Yeah. Now, if your whole table's murder hobos, great. Go to town. Right. But but since we're saying these are the worst versions thereof, if you're trying to play but, a but game, if, but this person is killing half, half everything. your table are, are Stan Dan Delivers, and the other half are Claudia's. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah. But if, but you're playing, if you're playing a legitimate game, this is your weekly game with your friends, and your friend is like, hey, man, I understand that you're trying to play the game, but I'm just going to kill everything. Well, now you've taken my fun away, dude. Now I have to like stop what I'm doing just to fit your needs because you're refusing to meet my needs. And Murder Hobo says, I don't care. I'm going to just kill every wagon driver. I'm going to kill everything. I'm here to just kill everything and get gold. Well, in which case you talk to the DM and the other, the other characters just say, you know, I think it's time to murder the murder, murder Hobo. Right. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, well, I, I, and, and as somebody who's been on the receiving end of that a few times. <laughs> kicked off the mountain. <laughs> <laughs> oh not oh not 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 oh i've more more times than i can count <laughs> so this again brings me back to what i was saying the other day it's you dude like it is like it's not about like you, you are not you, a victim you, anymore well here's the thing here's the thing <laughs> i am capable of playing just plain vanilla good char characters and i have before um 
And, when? I, and I'm pretty sure with, like, I was president in, in, when the this ca- in the case where I got kicked off the mountain, I was in most of the other cases where, where, where the party turned on me and killed me. I was not. <laughs> so we also saw the copycat. We remember how annoying they are as an adult. They're just they're yeah. not playing the game of the rest of you. They are just reliving their fantasy. They're playing Harry Potter. They're playing yeah. Randall Thor. They're playing Luke Skywalker somehow. You know, yeah, they I'm gonna, are. I'm going to say they the, those, those people are more are more nails on a chalkboard to me than any murder hobo yeah uh gibby you made you made compelling points uh but yeah um i'm gonna no i agree i just wanted to bring that back in yeah well we're also filling a podcast we are filling time so boom (laughs) okay all right so murder hobo you're annoying but not that annoying and the copycat moves on to the next round. Uh, next round, the snotty royal versus the self righteous paladin. Oh, this paladin! Ever like, especially when your group is playing a little dark, a little dingy, a little whatever. And then they want to play. I'm Mister I- Dudley God. I'll save you now. <laughs> you know when that person shows up, like righteous justific- justificus. You know, like however Mister Sleep does it for Bevan's books. When that guy shows up, all the fun time is gone. Yeah, but again, my my like I've I've played with the self righteous paladin who wasn't me, just for the record. <laughs> Um, and the thing is, I just think it forces the, like, you know, the party can do one of two things. They can either whine about it and be annoyed, or they can be clever about it. And if you're clever about it, there's ways, there's ways around it. Um, you know, I mean, paladins are technically kind of supposed to be, you know, self, self, self self-righteous. At least I find them less dull than the earth mother druids. I've read a lot of paladin stories on, um, on Reddit, because I was looking to see like what are examples of good paladins, and every once in a while you get a good story of a good paladin. Like you see somebody who's like, "I'm willing to forgo my god to get this thing done," because it's like, I know it's the right thing to do, and if my god is mad at me, I'll have to do it. But this, I'm going to do this. Like you can see certain convictions, certain they almost border on antihero when you play them right, or certain types. Like the oath of the vengeance paladin is a great one because it's like, no, I will, I will. Like they're like peacemaker. I'll murder everything for the sake of peace. Um. Sometimes they can be fun. Uh, well, that's not yes. what we're talking about here, though. Yes. Oh, again, I'm just, this is just the other side. Yeah. But the worst part is the one who's like, I'm going to stop all your, the anti-murder hobo, which is like, no, I'm not going <laughs> to let you have any fun. I'm not going to do anything devious. I'm going to call you. I'm going to turn my own party into the police. Again, yeah, I, wh- wh- I, I think that can lead to some interesting uh, scenarios around the table if the players are if the players are good enough. Um, well, the downside of this, and I'll say that, is because usually in a game, like when I'm playing a game, you know, I like to. I let to let the story decide my next level. I don't want. I'm not thinking five levels ahead. I'm thinking this game and what what the story tells me is how I change my character. So your characters want to evolve, but the paladin doesn't really evolve unless they become an anti. Unless they become an oathbreaker, they don't evolve. They are if they are a lawful good at the beginning. Their goal is to be lawful good at level twenty. So the paladin is trying to change you, but the character the paladin doesn't have an arc other than like I made everybody good around me, and sometimes good sucks. <laughs> so. This Gun is to a the tough head. one. Yeah. The snotty Royal is, uh, it's less, it's, it's not as egregious to me as this, as the self-righteous Paladin. Cause unfortunately a lot of people play Paladin because they just think I'm just, they're just, <sighs> they just ruin everybody's fun. <laughs> At least when they dial up, like the snotty Royals, like they are annoying. It is a role play choice to be annoying. The snotty paladin is like, I will legitimately stop everybody's good time so I can like, like uh, have us arrested, you know? See, so, yeah, I, I just think that leads to more interesting role play. Um, I, I, I per, like, honestly, I don't really find either, either the, like the snotty Royal, I would consider slightly more annoying as in white noise. Okay. Okay. I don't have a problem with the self-righteous uh, paladin. <sighs> I think there's way, I think there's ways to role play through that. There are, you might, but again, you might've, you might've swayed me. The, you, yeah. With the worst case. The worst right? versions. Yeah. Worst versions. Mm-hmm. This is this, oh. this is a, a, a this one. is a this is six and one half dozen the other for me, because like they I find them both e- like very annoying, like when done wrong. Well, all right, all right, you know what? I'm gonna go with the paladin because the snotty royal, the rest of the party can have fun. Making fun of them? Making fun of them, uh belittling them or like I mean, you can do that with the paladin too, though. So, but uh, uh, uh yeah, uh, religion. Okay, there, there you go. <laughs> that being said, the the paladin comes with like the the snotty royal could be any class, but that paladin, man, sometimes their buffs are really good. <laughs> like, <when> I, <laughs> yeah, I, I, I had a four E paladin. Let me let me tell you, 
at high level, he was he was pretty much untouchable. Well, that, that is not just that, but I'm saying like I'm just being within so many feet, I get like extra bonuses on my saving throws because he's just nearby. I'm like, yeah, that ain't so bad, you know. No. It's, and it's good to have the one friend of the who's like who can talk to the cops, I guess. So, Snotty Royal, while I hate you with everything in my heart, I think you're not as annoying. Are, are we saying the wait, wait, hang on? Are we saying that Snotty Royal goes forward, or the self righteous paladin goes forward? I'm going with self righteous paladin to go I forward or okay. forward, yes. Okay, so. So Snotty Royal, you are getting the, is that what you're saying too, Bob? Oh, excuse me, uh, uh, other Bob, Rick? That was actually an accident. No, no, I was actually voting for the Snotty Royal uh, to move forward. So you're the tiebreaker, Gibby. Oh, damn it, damn it, damn it, damn it. Will we get an hour to record? It's not I the know, I'm, decision. I, I, <laughs> the Snotty Royal is going forward. The self flight just paladin. Like you said, there's ways to role play around it, but like so when someone's just like a look at me asshole, they're always looking at me asshole, and like they make they make it unfun for everybody. Okay, no, we no. now wait, into wait, the is that look at me comma asshole oh, or is God, it a pirate? I knew, I, I, I knew we were going there. <laughs> no, it's pirate. Look at me asshole. All right, <laughs> all right, uh, all right. So we're into the semifinals. Uh, we have the if I'm reading this correctly, we have the lone wolf versus the it's my story dungeon master. Ooh. All right, so I'm going to say the lone wolf makes it more difficult for the dungeon master and adds tedium to the table. Yes. But I think the, the the it's my story DM ruins it for everybody. I want to see them both in the same game. <laughs> but here's the thing: if the lone wolf like goes off and is exploring the DM's world, they'll probably just like that that you just that's like peanut butter meat chocolate. Oh, yeah, yeah, you know. Yeah, yeah. Oh, I agree with Rick. I think the uh, it's my story DM is the one that, like it's when it stops being because when i'm running this game for you guys i'm building stuff but it's your story i'm guiding it but it is the story you guys are creating tells me what to build next and that's how i like to run games the dm who's like no, i don't care what you do next this is my story this is my world and you will play in my sandbox is way more way shittier to me than the one person because i can always like the lone wolf even the shittiest version thereof like dude knock it off yeah. you know just knock it off I can I can I can sometimes play with them, but I have a hard time playing. I can't come to the table when it's like it's my story DM. Yeah, that's the one that just makes me not want to play the game. Yeah, when it's on rails, where it's where it's where it's like it's like oh you like, you must go to Baldur's Gate. Well, we we don't want to go to Baldur's Gate. We're gonna go to at least somewhere else. It's like, all right, well you fall asleep on the ship and wake up and find In that Baldur's it's Gate. gone to Baldur's yeah. Gate. <laughs> <laughs> this oh exactly. We leave all the all the like portcullises out of town are shut. <laughs> Why? <laughs> That's, All right, so that's, that's me as DM. <laughs> um, <laughs> but yeah, think, I'm, with, I'm, I'm with you. Uh, yeah, the, the the DM is more annoying. Um, and, and as far as the lone wolf, the DM can shut that th shut that down pretty quickly. Like, all right, you go off on your own. Um, I'll come back to you in <laughs> 45 minutes, and uh, you'll get your three minutes of uh, time. Then, like, you know, you know, give him give him as a a proportional amount of time and uh they'll come back into the fold yeah all right uh the next up would be the copycat character versus the snotty royal yeah i'm, I'm gonna i'm uh, going with the uh, copycat thing yeah i'm gonna go with the boring copycat too because i am i yeah that's the thing it, it's like it, i'm in it's totally boring and once get nails on a chalkboard yeah like and uh, it's irksome. Also, it's it's when done to the biggest degree. The Snotty Royal, you had a good shot. He came out of the out of nowhere, but you are you don't make it on. It is definitely going to be the copycat. Is our copycat? Now we are in the finals. One second. Uh, so it really comes down to the DM or the lone or the lone player who's just annoying the fuck out of everybody else. Well, it's it's it is. Yeah, so it is the the dungeon master who think this is their world, their story, their everything versus the person who is weirdly enough the antithesis. I created a character based off someone else's work because I just want to live that fantasy, and much to the chagrin of everybody else at the table. Um, so weirdly enough, these are very fitting. Uh, they're both very selfish people. Uh, <laughs> I, have, I have a weird story about the copycat thing. I had nothing to do with Go the ND, but uh, I, I I confessed. I, uh, during i think our last side quest that i had run an email wrestling league yes you did well one of the, one of the people who played in it his, his characters that he created were always obsessed with debbie gibson 
<laughs> and I just thought it was a funny shake jo- your love, I, Debbie Gibson. <laughs> yeah, I, I just thought it was a funny thing that like he was just going with the theme and picking something ridiculous. And like, you know, and that, and yeah, it was, it was a little overblown, but you know something I can, I can, I can respect somebody who like, who basically sticks, sticks to like, you know, stays in character. Okay. This and then a, a couple, and then a couple like of years a later, lot, you know, <laughs> I was like a friend of mine who was also in that thing. He, he's like, dude, he shared me, like, he shared a newspaper copy and it was that guy. And he got, he was arrested for stalking Debbie Gibson. <laughs> so sometimes she the goes copy by cat, Deborah now. Thank yeah. you. So but sometimes yeah. the copycat actually harbors some weird fucking darkness <laughs> right you know uh i i am loath to admit but when i was like in my late teens i'm one of the characters i played was like i had a fast i mean like all of us who grew up in that era i had a fascination with the crow so i wanted a character who could come back from the dead and i had a bird and all that stuff and my and my dm's like stop it and he just just stop it i'm like okay and i and i, I realized what i was doing and I, I realized i was ruining other people's funds by like having this obsession with you know the late great Brandon Lee. Um, yeah, we've been there. But when this, when this is like, again, I was a teenager. I made mistakes <laughs> when you're an adult doing this, you know, like, then it gets creepy. I, yeah. It, it's not just creepy. It's just, it's, it's not creative. It's not fun. It's like, you know, and I think that's also was, since we're all writers, you know, we draw inspiration from a lot of places. We're trying to make our own characters, trying to do our own things in a certain way to like, you know, create something that's kind of original or as, as close original as, as you can in, in uh, uh, these worlds. Yeah. I mean, you know, if, if, if I want to play Superman, I'll like, you know, I'll find some DC role playing game or something. Yeah. Right. Bob, which one do you that's find? A, more annoying? Um, yes. The copycat is annoying, but it's one character. You can yeah. let him do his thing. Yeah. Roll your eyes and everybody yeah. else can do their thing. When the DM is railroading the entire game and just filling out backstory and or and world building that you don't care about and making the game boring, then uh you've got a different situation. I'm going with the DM. Yeah. Yeah, I think you're right on that. Whenever the DM like oh, you're like, What's this place again? Didn't you read my notes? No, no, no. I didn't. <laughs> you know, was I, I didn't realize it was homework. Uh, yeah, the, the only thing, the only thing I'll like give in favor of the DM is that if I'm in, a, if I'm in a campaign like that, I'm probably playing with the copycat much longer because the, because if the <laughs> DM is doing that, I'm I'm finding a way, a reason to not show up pretty quickly. Yeah, I'll just become a, like I said, if I'm playing the DM like that, it's not so much it's about like the there's the railroading aspect, but there's also the um oh excuse me, it's it's. Not so much the world building, you know, take pride in your world. We all do yeah. it. We make it these worlds and we want to show them off and that's cool. Uh, but letting the players breathe in that yeah. world, you just create the yeah. framework and letting them breathe, but not allowing that, you yeah. know, restricting allowing, yeah. no. agency. Man, but also there's, there's usually a sense of, you can tell when somebody's bending over backwards to kiss their own ass. <laughs> when somebody is so in love with their own <laughs> shit that like, you know, and again, that, that DM I played with who, was, who just had to read every every aspect of a story we're literally just riding through like turning a five like a, a like a less than a minute thing of okay you ride through the town into a half an hour of tedium yeah <laughs> and the, also, the only thing you can I mean, say to that is is fuck you like just go fuck yourself i i i would argue that any problematic dm is going to be worse than a, one problematic player yeah, yeah and it, it's it's agreed i mean and that's i think in hindsight you know you should we probably realized this was going to be the answer all along um also because it, it, like a lot of things it comes top down you know yeah now that being said if your table is full of like people who are like just lore junkies and the dm is filling with all that lore and that's they have a give and take kind of situation then then fantastic but we're playing but what we're talking about is the worst people so yeah it would be like me running the game for the dicey bastards and like making you all like stop and sniff every rose and every map. like i make you look at some maps because i spent some time on it yeah i did that i admit that I- but I'm not. But I'm not like curtailing your ability. What you're supposed yeah. to be doing. I'm, you have will. You know, oh, yeah. So with with the salty bastards, I spent a lot of time on brine moss and like you know. I'll admit, I tried my damnedest to steer them in certain directions, but they they were a box of cats. <laughs> <laughs> See, there's nothing like again. There's nothing wrong with wanting to shove your role, but like again, some of the for some of these DMs. The, the joke is you should have just written a book and there, and that is true. Yeah. You know, if you have this world and these characters and the, but your players are not fulfilling your needs, then, you know, take a step back. Yeah. Let's let, you know, go write your world down uh, and 
yeah, I just finished a lit, lit RPG novel. It literally is basically me being somehow the DM and the players, you know? <laughs> <laughs> well, that's the thing about writing a book. We are the DM and we are the players. Yep. All right. So I, I without you know, without any real fanfare, I think we just realized that the copycat, you, you came a long way, buddy. But in the end, it is the DM, the It's My World and My Story Dungeon Master, which is the number one, the most annoying yeah. uh, uh, trope type when playing Dungeons and yeah, Dragons, I mean, at least for this challenge. I mean, shitty, shitty players will ruin it for kind of each other, but a shitty DM just ruins it for everybody. Mm-hmm. Except maybe the shitty DM, but... But then that shitty DM winds up alone and sad and just talking to like, you know, running a game for a bunch of, for a table full of stuffed animals for ending up alone in, in an insane asylum. <laughs> <laughs> well, before we sign off for the night, do either of you have anything you want to like add? Anything else we want to add? Anything we want to talk about? Any, are there any other D are there, here, here's the thing. We have, we have a couple minutes. Are there any other Dungeons and Dragons tropes that were not on this list that you find personally annoying? I, you know, something the I would say I, like one thing. One thing I think that I found annoying is I, I don't even know if it's favoritism, but I guess the DM who can't say no and the play, and the player who like tries to take too much. Okay, I've 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 run into that a couple of times, and that is uh, that is annoying. Um, where essentially you wind up with like you know the the power curve gets um, seriously disrupted. Okay. I similar to that is the one where the DM has a favorite player and just keeps everything on them, whether they whether they are the main character. They, one is the the storyline is about them. Or the special sword of of Mithrax that can do everything goes to that player. And the, and the weird once you realize that you are the Robin to this guy's Batman, you know you're just a pack of Robins to this person's Batman. It is extremely annoying because the DM has a hard on for this one player. Or worse, the DM has a crush on one player and he starts giving them all this like in-game loot. You know, like I've I've seen that happen. You know, hey, look, she's a level three ranger now. She has a plus three bow. Isn't that wow? Look at look at that. Ah, oh, who would have saw that coming? Did, did it work? Uh, I'll ask her again when I talk to her next time. She's like, uh, she she knew he had a crush and she just kept taking the loot. So so it worked for her. He I'm not really sure I could. I'm that's not, not what I was perfectly honest. I'm not sure I could blame her. <laughs> what about you, Bobby? Any really annoying uh, D and D uh, tropes, players? I, don't know, types? I, I, can, I can go the opposite way. Uh, okay, the, give me your favorites. The, that's the character. No, I meant the character the DM really hates. I yeah, that was me <laughs> a few times. <laughs> I, uh, uh, I don't I like DMing for you because I never know what's going to happen. And it's like it, oh, is, is, a, it is a sack full of surprises. Yeah, this is uh, ages ago. But yeah, I was in this one game where. um, Yeah, the, the big bad. Killed me or, well, you know, shot me and I was uh, I was at zero. I was unconscious. The, the rest of the party went on to attack him. And then. Rather than defend himself, he shot me again to make sure I was dead. <laughs> <laughs> oh, that felt personal. Yeah, <laughs> yeah it kind of is there at a certain point. Like I, I had the one DM that would tell us after the game, you're just bad people. Like it's like no matter what we did wrong. And like so and sometimes when we would do something cool, like I had this one moment, I've never let him live this down. And Adam, if you're listening, I know you're not, but I'll never let I'll never let you live this down. Uh, we were doing this one thing. We were down down by the river, and these trolls came out of nowhere and attacked us. And one of our friends has got that ability. He bashed it with the shield and knocked the troll down in the water. Fantastic. I had an immovable rod. I used my turn. I ran up, pushed it under the water, clicked it onto its chest, and held it down. Cool. Next round, the the troll reached down, unclicks it, throws my rod away. Like So I'm like, what? He's like, they're smarter than average. I'm like, there's no smarter than average. There is like, I'm under, you're under a raging water, can't see drowning. And you have the wherewithal to go know exactly where that thing is. Like, and, and know exactly where uh, you fuck you, dude. Yeah. I did a really cool thing and you just took it away from me. I remember. So Adam, I'm still mad about that. We had, we, we, we had one player. This it was a small game. I think it was only like four of us playing, but we had a fifth show up for one day to play with us. Uh, we thought it went well. And then afterwards, the DM's like, oh, so-and-so won't be coming back. I was like, oh, what? He was like, oh, why? He said you were all sewer scum. 
Jesus. <laughs> <laughs> oh man! Like well, one one. I mean, I can't. It's not a bad trope, and I actually had a lot of a lot of fun playing with the guy. But one guy I used to play with, um, he would always make the wrong decision under pressure. He would panic and do the exact opposite of what he was supposed to. So it didn't really help us as a party, but it was always hilarious to watch. Yeah, I like that. That's, uh, I mean, that was, uh, if that's genuine, that's fantastic. Yeah, I, yeah. I, it was literally just, just like the DM's like, you know, like, okay, you know, you're being attacked on this side and this side. What do you do? <laughs> I blow up my, my lot of fireballs and put it in my mouth and blow my own head off. <laughs> All right, I can't see that being helpful under any circumstances. <laughs> Just took the coward's way out. New character. <laughs> I think but, so one of the was things he massively was, in debt. Or well, well, no, no. <laughs> uh, like his one, the, the, way, the way his character finally wound up dying. He was being attacked by insects. He was having a hard time fighting them off. He was down to like t- like two or three hit points, and his final action was was. He was at the top of the flight of stairs. He's like, I lay down on the landing so that my body doesn't fall and take extra damage after I'm dead. <laughs> His final thing was just to, I accept death. <laughs> I thought when you said insects, he's like, he's attacked by a pack of incels. I was like, wait, what? <laughs> <laughs> uh, no, I think the other, the other irksome thing that uh, when I'm playing the game is the, is the person that's trying to beat the DM. They've memorized the monster manual. They memorize all the rules and like, that's not how this, no, that no. character, that creature can't do that. Like, you know, that's sure. Maybe the medium is massaging certain things, but that's in their purview to do. They're allowed. Not everything is the exact same carbon copy yeah. of, of the thing before. Stop trying to beat the DM, you know, cause it, it, when it gets into the nerdy big dick contest, that's when I really tune out. I, I'm done, you know? So that's, I mean, that's when the DM has to do that. Yeah. No, no. It's like rules questions always come up, but sometimes there's that arbitrary thing, and you and you just a rule you just disagree with, and you're just like, okay, this is. But you know something, you have to be consistent with that. Like right. you know, like you can't say, okay, the players can't, like you know, can't can't uh, flank, but the monsters can. Mm-hmm. You, because that's just bullshit. We had one once where it was like, when does falling happen in a turn? Because we were playing on this like snowy mountainside, and things are getting shoved off left. Now some of our players could fly, some couldn't, so. You get obviously you get shoved off, but you're kind of hanging there in midair for like until it's your turn again because it's Looney Tune rules. Because yeah. so, but when does the falling happen? The beginning of your turn or the end of your turn? Because that really changes. Because since you had fall at, in game rules at 500 feet per second, that gr- drastically changes what you can and can't do and things. And th- sometimes the DMs get a little mixed up about what's going on, and it's so like you said, be consistent. That's all. Yeah. All right. Uh, any th- any last things you want? Anybody wants to add? Any favorites? I, any hates? One thing. One thing I tried doing in the car, and I don't think my my players liked it. But in the last game, I'm not not salty about it. Less outside of the A and E game, I was doing um, was I was trying I'm to cheating like, on us too because a round is six seconds. Yes. So on each person's turn, I didn't try to hold them to six seconds. I wasn't that big of a dick. But it's like you know, as they're going around the table, like you know, strategizing for a half an hour, I'm just like, guys, yeah. you know, you don't have time to do this. Yeah. <laughs> No, I'm 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 okay with that. I I prefer that. You've like you've you've my one DM would actually flip a timer over those like like an 18 second timer. I'm giving you three times the amount of time. Come up with your decision now. Think okay. it through. You know, actually, you should have been you should have been you should have been thinking about it instead of being on your phone. And like th- you know, you're on deck. You know what's coming up. So think about your turn. And I'm cool with that. So. Yeah. Bob. Yeah, I'm usually going to the bathroom and but before my turn, so. <laughs> So, gotta well we there we are on both ends of the spectrum try and catch up all right what's happening now <laughs> and, which uh which is also how klaus died wasn't bathroom but i was putting my kids to bed and came back and <laughs> and drew's just like oh do you save klaus um no i just whatever <laughs> <laughs> ah all right. Well, that is job. our time for this. Oh, <laughs> that is our time for this at this episode of Side Quest. I'm MK Gibson on behalf of Rick Walter and Robert Bevan. Uh, thank you all very much, and we'll see you all next time. Bye, everybody. Bye. Goodbye, friends. Bye.
Authors and Dragons is brought to you under a Creative Commons license, meaning you are free to share this material so long as credit is given to those who created it, which is us, the people you just heard play the game. Opening and closing themes performed by the Gore Core 4. Authors and Dragons!